Hello everyone, I hope everyone is doing well. So today we're going to be talking about something that is very relevant and that is viruses. So we're going to go from what is a virus, how does a virus make sick, all the way to how does a virus evolve. So let's go ahead and get started. So there are many different types of viruses and they differ in terms of the structure or shape, um, the genetic material. So for example, some viruses have single-stranded DNA or double-stranded DNA, and other viruses actually have RNAs, whether it's single-stranded or double-stranded. And they also differ in terms of like the host cell that they actually infect. So in this case, we're, actually, we're looking at six different viruses. So we're looking at HIV, Hepatitis B, Ebola, which was very relevant a few years ago, adenovirus, influenza, and there, there are some viruses that are very specific that they actually infect bacteria. So we call those bacteriophages. So as you can see, the bacteriophage looks like a little alien spaceship, if you will. So viruses are very interesting. Technically, viruses are not considered to be alive. And what I mean by this is, if you guys remember, at the beginning of the semester, when we talk about how in science and biology, we use different rules or different criteria in order to determine whether something is alive or not. When it comes to viruses, they don't follow that criteria, they don't follow the rules, if you will. So viruses are very small in size. Some viruses are as small as 20 nanometers. Here's the first rule that viruses don't follow. So every living organism is made out of cells. When it comes to viruses, viruses are not made out of cells. A virus is made out of a protein coating, if you will, so a bunch of proteins with genetic material inside and a few other proteins inside as well. Viruses are unable to grow or replicate on its own. And this is why viruses must infect a whole cell in order to use its machinery to make more clones. What I mean by this is specifically, I'm talking about the ribosomes. So the viruses uses the host cells ribosomes in order to make more clones of the viruses. And the last rule that a virus doesn't follow is that they are unable to maintain homeostasis. So viruses, they have genetic material. And this genetic material can be either DNA, so whether it's single-stranded or double-stranded, or RNA, whether it's single-stranded or double-stranded. So some examples of a virus that has DNA that is double-stranded are herpes virus. An example of a virus that has DNA that is single-stranded is the parvovirus. So some examples of viruses that have um, single-stranded DNA, or RNA rather, are for example Ebola, HIV, and coronaviruses. Uh, and some examples of viruses that have double-stranded RNA are rotaviruses. And so depending on what genetic material it's found on the virus, is it going to be considered DNA virus or RNA virus? So viruses are very tricky. They try to fool your immune system. So in your immune system, you actually have cells that their main goal is to destroy or kill foreign invaders. So a virus consists of a capsid, which is basically a shell that is made out of a bunch of proteins that essentially encapsulates that genetic material. A virus also has what we call capsid spikes, and the main goal of the capsid spikes is actually to attach to the whole cell surface. Um, the virus also has what we call a viral envelope. And this is a very interesting part because the viral envelope, it's a combination of proteins from the virus itself, but also proteins from the whole cell membrane. And the purpose of the viral envelope is actually to fool your immune system. So that way the cells that go and check to see whether that particle is actually from the from your own body or is if you know a foreign invader because it has some parts that are from the whole cell it might fool your immune system so the purpose of the viral envelope is actually to uh, infect uh, the host cell but also to fool if you will your immune system as well 
So here's a picture of a virus. So on the top where it says glycoproteins, so that will be the captic spikes. Um, so if you remember, so that the virus actually uses the captic spikes in order to attach to the whole cell's surface. Um, so the viral envelope is actually made out of proteins from the virus itself and also from the whole cell. And the virus uses that in an attempt to actually fool your body or to fool your immune system. Now, this is an RNA virus. And what's interesting about RNA viruses is that they actually have an extra enzyme. So the enzyme that we call reverse transcriptase. And the reason for that is because when it comes to the virus, the information goes, genetic information goes from RNA to DNA and then back to RNA in order to make a protein. In the, in the case of humans, in the case of us, we actually don't have that enzyme, that regression cryptase. We can actually only go from DNA to mRNA to a protein. Okay, so we have here a picture of a bacteriophage. And bacteriophages are basically viruses that actually infect uh, bacteria. I think they're uh, really cool looking. They actually look like little spaceships, um, if you will. So a bacteriophage actually has an elongated head and that's where it has the genetic material. In this case, we're talking about DNA. And it also has basically a tail. And in the tail, it actually has proteins that actually attaches to the host cell, in this case, the bacteria, and then actually ingests its DNA in order to make more bacteriophages. As we mentioned earlier, viruses are unable to replicate on their own. This is why they must infect a host cell in order to use the ribosomes to produce more viral particles. Some viruses are actually very specific. Um, they will only infect a specific type of cell within your body. So once the virus is inside the host cell, it begins to produce more virus particles. It also begins to produce more um, genetic material. And then these particles cell assemble in order to produce new viruses. And once those viruses are produced, they actually burst out of the cell, and essentially what they do here is that they actually kill the whole cell.